Saving a photograph to RAW instead of JPEG offers the creative photographer more flexibility for image correction and enhancement. It is also argued that a RAW image preserves more detail than a JPEG. Adobe Lightroom has a range of impressive features that unlock detail from RAW files that instant gratification via Auto and JPEG cannot possibly deliver. Subtle and almost hidden information captured by camera requires the human touch to flesh it out and best done with RAW images. Even with rapid advances in digital technology, sensors cannot record with absolute precision what the eye can see, especially scenes of high contrast. Overexposed highlights and shadows with no detail ruin images. We might get there one day, but for now, it is traditional photographic skills with today's computer techniques that create the quality image. Only experience gained through trial and error will tell the photographer how to set the camera controls for both photography and subsequent image adjustment. Even landscapes can have underexposed shadows and overexposed clouds in the same photograph. When saving to JPEG, the camera will digitally develop the photograph in an instant. The technology is amazing, but my creativity is paramount. Compare the post-production image with the unaltered original and the difference is amazing. Here's the metadata. Notice how I have set the camera controls. It might raise a few eyebrows. I underexposed the image by one third of a stop and spot meter off the clouds. Even when autofocus is coupled to the metering point, a wide angle lens and f8 will create enough overall sharpness because Micro Four Thirds technology has more depth of field than many other formats. Now for Lightroom adjustments. First we're going to increase clarity and then the vibrance. The amounts depend on each image. No one image is the same as the next or the last one here. So we've got to use our eyes for judgment. Increase exposure and contrast, but don't worry too much about the possibility, and I think it's going to happen, of underexposed shadows. Next, we will reduce highlights to increase cloud definition. Now we increase shadows to restore that detail back into the shadows that we lost a moment ago. We can also decrease whites a little bit and decrease blue luminance to get a bit more punch into the clouds. And I think that's about it really. Remember, when saving to JPEG, changes are made by the camera's image processor. But with RAW, I make the adjustments in Lightroom and then save to JPEG or TIFF. The RAW file is unchanged as modifications are saved to a coupled XMP file that can be altered again or deleted, then returning the RAW file back to its original state. A greater challenge are church interiors. Now with this shot, the window is much brighter than the dull interior, so that spells trouble. First the metadata. Exposure is nearly two stops underexposed. Wow! I have spot metered near the window, and although it is overexposed, it can still be corrected. And this is a precise skill that cannot be taught. 
ISO kept at 200, shutter speed 8th of a second, handheld with an in-camera image stabilizer, etc, etc, etc. Doesn't it look absolutely dreadful? I have done everything, everything incorrectly, haven't I? Haha, <laughs> but it's going to work. Right, uh, back to the Lightroom adjustments. Clarity and vibrance increased again, as we did with the last picture. But now we'll increase exposure. That's not going to help the window very much. Neither will increasing the contrast. That's not going to help either. Don't worry, because now for the magic. Highlights reduced as far as the slider permits, and the whites. Reduce shadows and blacks. A bit of minor tweaking with yellow and blue luminance. Minor adjustment with the dehaze filter. I think that's about right. Probably done everything wrong. But does it look okay? That's what really matters. Does it look right on the screen? Never mind how I've done it. So long as we start together and finish together, then don't worry what goes on in the middle. Right, uh, back to planet Earth again. Adobe Lightroom has a wealth of different features which I have not touched upon and probably haven't discovered either. I only use those that give the results I want. There are, yes there are, many other methods and HDR is just one. I'm aware of that. But mine works through experience gained over many years and you can't teach that to anyone therefore it is personal to me and possibly of no use to anyone else